how's it going? Did up a bit of a clip the other day showing how we use the wastewater from the aquaponics and explained how we use it to help brew our worm cast tea and also mentioned that we add biochar in there to activate it. So I thought I'd do a bit of a clip, a two in one clip on worm cast tea and also biochar. But just to explain biochar briefly, biochar is the cooking of organic matter in a very low or zero oxygen environment above 400 degrees centigrade or 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Biochar can be pretty much well made out of most organic matter. I think in the Philippines, the, I think it was the Philippines, they use rice hulls. Also animal manures are used in different parts of the world and tree scraps, just, you know, prunings from your trees, twigs, bits and pieces like that. Animal bedding, the stuff that I bought is actually made out of chicken bedding and chicken manure. When it's cooked, what happens is it creates all these little holes and nooks and crannies. What happens is your nutrients get locked away in those nooks and crannies, um, microorganisms as well, and also moisture. It's supposed to be a really good additive to sandy soil, so veggie patch in Perth, there might be something you might want to have a look at uh, for locking nutrients in there. They basically don't get rush, uh, washed away, they get trapped by this char. So how I made the compost tea is getting about 15 litres, or I think it's about 4 gallons of the wastewater from the aquaponic radial flow filter, to that I've added one kilo or about two pounds worth of worm cast, freshly harvested, minus the worms I took them out, in a paint strainer bag. Thanks for giving us that tip Bobby, it's come in handy. Um, that's suspended in the water itself. To that I've added about 100 mils or just under half a cup of unsulfured molasses. That's in there as well, giving that a big stir and thrown in the air stones. That sat there for about three, three days, three and a half days before I added four litres or about a gallon, a bit under a gallon of the biochar. Uh, that biochar should do around about two square metres of the bed, I figure. So that's been sitting in there for about a day and a half and last night I added probably about um, two containers of this worth of the mycorrhiza and that's just in there bubbling away as well. I did sweeten it up with a little bit more molasses. Uh, there's, I've read a few different things on the brewing of compost teas and worm cast teas online. Um, some people that don't think it's worth putting the air bubblers in and that sort of thing. I'm basically working on the idea that you get two different types of bacteria. Well actually you get more but the two main ones for gardening is aerobic and anaerobic. Anaerobic bacteria like an oxygen deficient environment, aerobic bacteria like oxygen. So I'm trying to brew up the microbes in the system, in, in the, sorry, in the casting tea, that like oxygen. So when it goes out in the garden, they'll be beneficial to the plants. The reason the molasses has gone in is because those microorganisms feed off carbohydrates amongst other things. So it's boosting the bacteria numbers and the, the worm cast itself holds, not only holds those bacteria and those, um, the microorganisms, but it also has nutrients in there as well. The worm cast is made from veggie scraps from the house, and also horse manure, so there's lots of other nutrients in there as well. So it's a bit of an all-round tonic, I suppose, rather than just a straight-out fertilizer. But anyway, that's enough banging on about that. I'll take you up there and give you a look at what it's looking like now, bubbling away, and I'll start to separate it out and get it ready to put on the garden beds. Just under the house here now, and this is what it looks like today. It's actually gone rather crazy with the bubbles. Like I said, I gave it a bit of a, a dribble of molasses last night because I figured it's been sitting there for a few days and the bubbles had started to fall down a bit. So we threw the molasses in there and some of the mycorrhiza, and yeah, she sort of overflowed a bit, created a monster. So last thing I'm going to do is just give this bag full of castings a bit of a squeeze. Get as much moisture out of there as I can. So that can just sit down in there. And this is one of those paint strainers. And it's a large, I think it's a 3 or 4 gallon paint strainer. About 10, 12 litres I think. Maybe 15. Um, you can buy these at most hardware shops. And all I do is put that into this spare bucket here. Give this one a bit of a stir. I'll just pinch my worm cast stick. This smells very sweet and earthy by the way. Just stir up the bottom here. I've been giving it a stir pretty much well um, once every six to eight hours, so except during the middle of the night, which is understandable. So I've given that a bit of a stir and I'm just going to pour it through into this bag here. That is black. It is very black, isn't it? I have Koo helping me here today. She just helped me make up some horse manure. 
screen up some horse manure. So now it's just a matter of pulling this out, squeezing the water out of it. So there you go. That's pretty much all it. And what you're left with is very black, murky compost tea that will be put onto the garden. I'll just empty it out. Actually weighs a lot more than it did before, that's for sure. This bag's got a bit of uh, biochar on it I just can't get off, so I'll just pop that back in here with the compost tea. And um, yeah, they can just go into the garden as well. So I have about three litres of the um, compost tea. And it's just going to go into this watering can, so you'll end up with one part compost tea and two parts water. If I can get it in properly, it's rather black as you can see from the charcoal. And then I just top it up with water. And then I'll just go and water this directly under around the base of plants. I'll give the cauliflower a bit of a feed and give the remaining broccoli a bit of a feed in the greenhouse or the hoop house. So it's as easy as that. This is the wicking bed this char is going onto. And for now it's just a matter of sprinkling it over the top. If my assistant could grab me the rake on it, it's right behind me. There you go, I am prepared. So as you can see, it doesn't actually add a great deal of organic matter to the beds, but it's more the, the nutrient and the moisture holding capacity of the char itself. So I'm just raking this in the top two or three inches of the soil here. Just combining it, leveling out the bed a bit as I go. Now that that's raked in, the next thing I'm adding is some worm casts. This is just worm casts from our worm farm. So this will be going in. There are worms in here. Where are we? Here we go, there's a couple. They're very light sensitive, so I won't bring them out too much. It's very bright here today, but we do have compost worms all through here. When I harvest the worms now, all I do is take half the castings out of the farm and leave the worms in the other half of the castings just to repopulate. But what this will do here with all this castings is add worms to the soil as well as their eggs and also the bacteria and microorganisms that live in the worm castings. They'll be giving the whole bed and the ecosystem in the soil a bit of a kickstart as well. So I'd say about a gallon or four or five litres worth of worm cast has gone on there now. Now because these worms are all on the surface, as quickly as I can, Kira and I will be adding some of this screened horse manure. This manure is going on about three to four inches thick, or seven, seven and a half to ten centimetres. This will not only act as part of the mulching layer, but it will provide food for the compost worms that have just been popped into the bed and the ones that are already in there. So then all we're going to do is give it a good watering. For anyone who's thinking that I might be doing the microbes a disservice by spraying with chlorinated town water, we actually had a three-stage filter put onto the house when we got the aquaponics. It was just a bit of an insurance policy. Yeah, I just thought I'd mention it, that. We have very, very little, if any, chlorine come out of our water. So before the mulch goes on, what I'll be doing is adding some marigold seeds. These are just ones I just freshly picked off the plant up the top. And also some mustard Osaka purple. Kira and I are just going to sprinkle some marigold seeds just randomly over here. And now just a bit of a, um, hopefully even, sprinkling of the Osaka purple mustard. I was actually going to put Taggart's Minuta or stinking Roger on this bed today, but I forgot, and I've already sown the mustard. So there you go, there's a quick look at how I make up the worm cast tea and use it to activate the biochar, and a bit of a layman's take on biochar in general. As I said before, I've only just started to use it, so I don't really have any fantastic results to show you, to tell you the truth, but from what I've seen online, I mean, South Americans were doing it for thousands of years and they used to grow luscious crops, apparently. Um, haven't asked any lately, but um, yeah, so I think it is something that's going to greatly improve the quality of our soils. Pretty much well, all our soils were had to be purchased and bought in to make up these garden beds. Uh, there are some scrapings from the chook yard, some horse manure, worm casting and organic fertilizers that's gone through as well as mulching. But yeah, they are pretty deficient in minerals and, and the bioactivity in there, I think. 
I'd like to say a quick thanks to Dave. Um, I racked his brain a bit on this. Um, he actually makes it in his fireplace at home uh, in a little tin, makes his own biochar up. We don't have a fire running here. If we had a fire during winter, I think we've had the brazier on once, I'd have a crack at making it. But yeah, if I don't see the point in burning fuel to make something like this, I'd rather buy it off someone who makes it for a living, give them, you know, small business some dosh. I'll put some links in the description below to a couple of websites. Also a link to the mob that I bought this from. They're up on the Sunshine Coast here in Queensland. So I suppose I'll pretty much will call it quits there. If you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, just pop them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope this has been helpful and take it easy. Catch ya!